Witnessing someone you care about having a panic attack can be quite alarming. And if you care for them, you probably want to alleviate their distress quickly. This guide will help you to understand what is happening and what you can do. Focus on yourself first of all. Adjust your behaviour to be the opposite of your friends. Slow down. Make your voice slow, calm, but not too quiet as you need them to be able to hear you. Do not rush. Do not ask lots of questions. Do not increase the speed or the pitch of your voice. Make sure your own breathing is steady and do not make any sudden movements or touch the person panicking. Less is more. Say something reassuring such as, I'm here, it's going to be okay. Try and guide your friend to a quiet, more private space where they can sit down and ideally sit down yourself. Outside can be good. Your friend's thinking and senses are not working very well right now. They have been overstimulated to the point of panic. This is released adrenaline which has set in motion a fight-flight process in their body. It is a chemical reaction and will take time to calm down, just like a hot cup of tea takes time to cool. Your job is to try and reduce further stimulation, adrenaline, anxiety, fight and flight being set off on top of the existing panic. Now is not a good time for a lot of questions, examining triggers, or dealing with what is to be done in the future. Now is for providing the optimum environment for your friend's adrenaline levels to gently and slowly come down of their own accord. One question you might like to ask is, do you think you're having a panic attack? Or have you had a panic attack before? This might help them register what is happening in their altered state and it also gives you important information. While you're sitting quietly with them, you can use grounding techniques. Your friend will have up to five senses that currently may be impaired. It's helpful to think, have I got contact with my friend via two of their senses? For example, if you say to your friend, nod your head if you can hear me, then they can hear you and they can move their body, which is two senses. If they say yes, they can hear you and give you eye contact. That is four senses that are functioning at this point. You can bring in the sense of touch by either offering them something to hold and objects such as a pebble that you can carry with you, a teddy bear or your hand. It's not wise to reach out and touch your friend while they're in a panic attack, as you don't know what past trauma may be being evoked. If you simply hold out your hand, then they can choose whether they take it or not. And if they do hold your hand, then they can squeeze it. Do not ask questions about what happened or a trigger while your friend is panicking. And remember, that once the panic has passed, asking these things may start it off again. But do ask them questions about their senses, what they can hear and feel and touch and see. If your breathing is slow and steady, you can invite them to concentrate on getting their breathing to match yours. And you can explain that their current bodily sensations will pass. Once your friend's breathing pattern is restored to normal and their senses are functioning in the way that they usually do and they appear to have their thinking back online, don't rush or bombard them with questions. If you noted the time at the beginning of the panic attack, you might note it now. This could give your friend future reference as to how long their panic attack lasted 
and this can be helpful so that they don't fear it will go on forever next time. It may have seemed a long time to them, but only have been five or ten minutes. If your friend wishes to tell you what the trigger was or what happened, then let them. Do not judge their reasons as silly or trivial or give them suggestions of how they should feel or react instead. They are likely to feel some embarrassment about their loss of control. At the same time, don't treat your friend as fragile and become overprotective just because they've shown their vulnerability to you. Just because panic attacks look alarming, it doesn't mean that your friend wants to be treated differently to before. Let them know you're available to talk about it and that you're fine with not talking about it. You can point them towards our well-being bite-sized video series or ask them if they think it might be helpful to see a counsellor within the well-being service. Whatever they choose to do is fine. Thank you for watching this video. The skills to support someone with a panic attack or in crisis are a great skill to have through life.